Well, it's going to take money, and there are a number of ways. I've been always been I've been very careful to be very to be specific about how we how we do that. Only and, and only because I have my own idea. But I want to make sure when you're dealing with the legislature particularly, I want to get to 41 and 21 votes. I think there are a number of ways we can do that. People have talked about a gas tax. People have talked about user fees. People have talked about motor vehicle. There's a number of things we can do to get there. Um, I, I'm open to all of them. Um, as I said, the one that gets me 41 and 21 votes is probably, you know, is the one that I'm going to go with. But um, I think it's, whatever it is, it's going to cost us some money. And we haven't, that's always a difficult thing to do. No matter where, no matter where we get the money from, um, opponents will say, we can't do that. And it's a challenge. Listen, people wake up every day and worry about putting sneakers on their children's feet. That's, you know, the challenges of day-to-day -day life. But this is another challenge of day-to-day -day life that we need to accept. But you know, in short, I'm open to a number, and we're having discussions on a number of different ways to do that. But it's going to take a revenue enhancer, is the phrase I've been using. I think that, um, probably, I don't believe it will happen before lame duck. It's probably the best way to answer that. Um, yes, I, I think that given with the and, uh, political reality is, I think that with the assembly running for re-election that between now and the election it probably can't be done. So I'm hopeful it will be done after that, right after that, yes. I hope. I'm not getting younger. <laughs> the, um, I think the ferries are becoming an important part of the intermodal system. I mean, even in Jersey Transit, we have, we've just formed a stronger partnership with them, with, in this case, with the um, you know, waterways. Um, Listen, during, day, during the crisis, the several crises we had, whether it was the blackout, the blackout, when I remember when McGreevy was governor, we had the blackout in Manhattan. If it wasn't for the ferries, God knows what we would have done getting those people across the river. And the same thing with 9-11. So, you know, I think though, when, when those type of uh, things happen, um, you realize how important the ferry is and in there are contingency plans that if one of those tunnels, for whatever reason in the short term, one of the tubes that we use across for, go down, we're going to have to rely much more, obviously, on the ferry. It's not going to solve the entire problem, but it is something that we're actually giving a lot of thought to of how we maximize the use of the ferries and how we can work together in terms of investing in, in boats, et cetera. There, there is always the, there is, that is always a challenge to try to move a bureaucracy forward and to have decisions made. I mean, there's a, you know, I've been on both sides now, um, both in government and out of government, and had clients where I was trying to move things through a bureaucracy, so I um, know better now than I did in many years ago. Um, It, it is something, I mean, the, it, it really comes down to human beings. It comes down to leadership, I think, in the, these departments and having leaders to say, you know, let's move, let's move a project forward. I mean, really comes down to, most of it comes down to people. Getting somebody to take that pile off that desk and move it forward and give you an answer, yes or no, if, there, if it's a development, for instance. But there's also a question of you need to have people to do that. That goes to what I said, you know, there's half as many people there as there, you know. It's nice to say, well, let's reduce the size of government. But if you don't have, if, if you don't have people to look, if you don't have those engineers to look at your project, it's going to take longer to do. And you know what I found as well? 
lot of times, a lot of the people were using consultants who basically gave us applications that not, were not worth the paper they were written on. So they ping, ping pong back and forth. And it's easy, so if you hire a consultant, your consultant saying it's a bureaucrat who, who is no good, when in fact his application was not worth the paper it was written on. There's a little bit of both, but um, I actually think it's better now than it was. Um, that may not be, you may not think so, but I mean, I, I, it, it appears to um, be, I think the downturn in the economy, that when we went through the downturn in the economy, I think that there was um, a recognition that we needed to, the bureaucracies needed to adjust to get people to work. I mean, DEP is certainly, I mean, I don't worry, DEP, DEP is a better place today. I don't know how the hell he did it. But it's certainly, it, it's certainly better than it was five years ago, I think. I think most people would agree with that. No, not perfect, but certainly much better than it was. Well, there's, a, there's always a possibility if you have enough money. Because mm -hmm. I was thinking that would get the people out of their cars and you have a light rail system Parallel to Garden State Parkway. Yeah. Uh, is it, yes. It's if you had if you had your your giant wish list, you would have your you would have mass transit that run, that ran north, south, and east and west, and a long variety of different um, highways. Um, you know they are expensive properties. They are expensive projects. I mean, if you look at the Hudson Bergen Light Rail Line, that would go say into Englewood, which is the plan. That's a billion two today. And if you look at the line in Gloucester County, that's a billion five. Um, those are just two projects. And that's a lot of money. Um, that's, and that's on top of what we, we, what we need to do in order to just keep um, our normal fleet going and tracks operational and um, et cetera. This is, this is, these are not insignificant numbers. But we, I always say the following as well. We, for too long, have said, well, if we don't, it's too much money, so we won't start it. If we don't have all the money in the bank, we won't start it. But we keep on kicking the can down the field. <laughs> and we, gotta, we, gotta, we, we just have to start doing these things. When they built the George Washington Bridge, if you look at the New York Times at the time, they talk at a complete boondoggle. Because when they built the bridge, there was nothing in Bergen County. There were pig farms in Secaucus, and there was no, there were farms. People thought it was a complete waste of money. And the rest is history. I mean, it's created, it created, you know, a, a Bergen, look, at, look what exists there now. It has the highest per capita income in the state. When they created the turnpike, same thing. Oh, we don't need that. We have Route 9. We don't need that. Well, it created the largest economic growth in the state of New Jersey's history when it was built, and it was four lanes. I think and that's 60 years ago. Imagine, imagine this state without a turnpike. Well, I'm, I'm serious. But at the t somebody had the foresight to say, we're going to do it, <laughs> and we're going to build it, and we're going to take the grief in order to move it forward. You know, Chuck Schumer gave a speech several years ago in New York, and he said, you know, we used to do big projects. Now if we have a proposal and four people stand up and say, no, let's not do it, they say, oh, well, let's move on. You know, we're not gonna do that. Um, that's a problem, I think, and, and I don't know where we lost our way, um, but I think we have lost our way when it comes to, um, I mean, Robert Moses had his faults. <laughs> But he did some great things as well. Um, he may have run through a neighborhood or two, and maybe, <laughs> but he did. He got some. We haven't done those things, and I think, but not even just here in this country. Um, I mean, think about it. The, Dwight Eisenhower created the the in, uh, the highway system, interstate highway system, and that was probably the last really great thing we ever did in terms of transportation in this country. 
and those are the 50s. Well, that's, well, that says it all. <laughs> uh, and we're, we've been living off of that. That's why I said, you know, about our parents and grandparents, we've been living off that legacy and those projects our whole life without adding to it. 